So we know that triglycerides are fuel molecules, but before the cells of our body can actually use the potential energy that is stored in the chemical bonds of triglyceride molecules, the triglyceride molecules have to undergo three important processes, three important stages. Now, in the previous lecture, we discussed stage one, and we said that in stage one, the adipose cells that store the triglycerides actually have to release those fatty acids. So they essentially break down and mobilize the triglycerides into free floating fatty acids and glycerol molecules and then release the fatty acids into the blood plasma of our body. And once inside the blood plasma, a carrier protein molecule known as serum albumin picks up these fatty acids and then brings them to target cells. So let's suppose we have some type of target cell, let's say a muscle cell, and this is the cell membrane of that target cell. So in stage two, once the fatty acids are brought into the cytoplasm of that target cell, that cell needs to activate the fatty acids and then transport the fatty acids into the matrix of the mitochondria. Why into the matrix? Well, because in stage three, within the matrix, those fatty acids are actually broken down into acetyl coenzyme A molecules, and then these acetyl coenzyme A molecules are fed into the citric acid cycle and that helps the cell generate ATP molecules. So what I'd like to focus on in this lecture is stage two. So the activation of the fatty acids and their subsequent transport into the matrix of the mitochondria. So as we go through the following text, let's use this diagram as our reference. So let's suppose the fatty acid makes its way into the cytoplasm of the target cell. What happens next? Well, the first thing that has to happen is a special type of enzyme found on the outer membrane of the mitochondria known as fatty acid thiokinase or sometimes acyl coenzyme synthetase has to actually activate the fatty acid and it activates the fatty acid by ultimately creating a thioester bond between the sulfur atom on the coenzyme molecule and the carbon atom on that fatty acid. So in a two-step process, the enzyme fatty acid thiokinase catalyzes the formation of a thioester bond between the carboxyl group of the fatty acid and the sulfur group of that coenzyme A. So let's take a look at this two-step process and let's begin with step one. So in step one, we actually use an ATP molecule. And what this enzyme does is, the enzyme catalyzes the transfer of an adenosine monophosphate group from the ATP and onto this fatty acid and that generates an intermediate molecule known as acyl adenylate. In the process, it also releases releases a, pyro, um, a pyrophosphate. Now, this pyrophosphate here actually plays a very important role in this reaction. What's its role? Well, basically, inside the cytoplasm, we also have an enzyme known as pyrophosphatase. And what pyrophosphatase does is it acts on the pyrophosphate. It essentially hydrolyzes the bond in the pyrophosphate and that generates two orthophosphate molecules. And this hydrolysis of the pyrophosphate that is produced in step one ma basically makes this reaction product favored. It drives this reaction forward. So in the first step, an ATP molecule is used to transfer A and P onto the fatty acid. This releases a pyrophosphate molecule which subsequently hydrolyzes into orthophosphates and this drives the reaction forward. That's why this step here is important. Now, once we form the acyl adenylate, it then acts as a reactant molecule in step two. And in step two, this entire fatty acid is actually bound onto the active side of the enzyme. And then a coenzyme molecule comes in and acts as a nucleophile and attacks the carbon and it forms a thioester bond between this sulfhydryl group of the coenzyme and this carbon here and that generates the acyl coenzyme A molecule. In the process, it also displaces and kicks off that adenosine monophosphate molecule. So, if we sum up these reactions, this will be the net reaction that we have.
On the reactant side, we have that incoming fatty acid, an ATP molecule that is used here. We have the coenzyme A that is used here. And then we have a water molecule that is used in this hydrolysis reaction. On the product side, we have this acyl coenzyme A molecule, we have the AMP molecule, two orthophosphates, and then we have the two H plus ions. And notice this molecule doesn't actually show up because it acts as an intermediate. When we sum up these molecules, these two molecules actually cancel out and so that intermediate will not appear in this overall net reaction. So this is basically a two-step process in which the cells basically activate the fatty acid molecule and prepare it for transfer into the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, once we form that acyl coenzyme A, the next, uh, the next step is to basically transfer, or the next step is to transport it into the matrix of the mitochondria. Now, before the acyl coenzyme A molecule can actually be transferred, it has to be converted into another molecule. And an important molecule that is used in this step is carnitine. So carnitine is essentially made from two different amino acids, and it's an alcohol molecule. More, specific, it, more specifically, it's a zwitter ion alcohol molecule, and that means it contains a positive charge on one side and a negative charge on the other side. So this is what carnitine actually looks like. And what the carnitine does is it reacts with the acyl coenzyme A, and it kicks off that coenzyme A component and the carnitine basically replaces that coenzyme A. And what happens is we have a bond that is formed between this carbon and this oxygen on the carnitine. So the carnitine contains a negative charge on the carboxylate group, a positive charge on this quaternary nitrogen, and we also have this alcohol group and the oxygen of the alcohol forms a bond with the carbon of this carbonyl group of the acyl coenzyme A. And so we kick off that coenzyme A and we form a molecule known as acyl carnitine. Now this particular reaction is actually catalyzed by an enzyme found on the outer membrane of the mitochondria. So just like fatty acid thiokinase is found on the outer membrane of the mitochondria, this enzyme known as carnitine acyl transferase 1 is also found on the outer membrane of the mitochondria and it catalyzes the formation of the acyl carnitine. Now, why do we need to form acyl carnitine? Well, because we have an enzyme found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria known as translocase. And this is this enzyme shown in orange. And this translocase allows the movement of acyl carnitine molecules across the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So we form the acyl carnitine to actually be able to shuttle that molecule into the matrix of the mitochondria. So, we see that once activated, the fatty acid must be transported into the matrix via the transport protein known as translocase. And to do this, the acyl coenzyme A must first react with carnitine to actually form acyl carnitine. And the enzyme that catalyzes this step is known as carnitine acyl transferase 1. Now, once we form the acyl carnitine molecule, it then moves into the matrix via the translocase. And once inside the matrix, we actually have the opposite reaction taking place that took place here. So we essentially want to replace that carnitine with the coenzyme A. And so we have another enzyme, a different enzyme known as carnitine acyl transferase 2 that essentially catalyzes the transfer of a coenzyme component onto that acyl molecule and that displaces the carnitine and kicks that carnitine off. And in the final step, the carnitine is basically shuttled back into the cytoplasm via that same translocase. So we have an exchange taking place for every acyl carnitine molecule that moves in, we have a carnitine molecule that moves out. And those carnitine molecules essentially go back into the cytoplasm because the carnitine molecules are used by this particular step in the formation of acyl carnitine from acyl coenzyme A. So 
This is basically the process by which that particular target cell that accepts the fatty acids is able to actually activate the fatty acids and then bring those fatty acids into the matrix of the mitochondria.